Good afternoon, everybody, uh, and thank you for joining, uh, joining us. And welcome to the latest format webinar designed to offer tips and insights on ways in house resourcing teams can improve your talent attraction and engagement strategies. So, uh, here for this session, what we'll be doing is uh, talking you through um, the story of a long standing format client, Empower, um, and how they were able to tap into their single biggest resource, which is their people, to tell their employer brand story and help them attract some of the best talent on the market. And here to take us through this story is Empower Account Director David Johnston, or DJ to his friends, uh, who I'm sure some of you are familiar with. Um, so as usual, the webinar will take around 20 minutes, um, and as always, there's time for questions at the end. So please do feel free to type any questions um, into your screen as we go, and we'll address them at the end. Uh, so in the meantime, DJ, over to you. Thank you, Jamie. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, what I'm basically going to talk about um, for the next 20 minutes um, basically is a presentation that Adrian Whiteman, uh, head of resourcing at Empower, and I gave at the in-house recruiter conference about two weeks ago. Um, Empower, as Jamie said, is uh, a company we've worked with for, and I've worked with for a number of years, um, and really this is about their journey and how they've you know, um, adapted to the modern age of recruitment and how they have used uh, the power of their employees to um, help them attract and engage with talent. Um, you know, many of you will have read all the various media articles about the energy companies and you'll recognize that you know, the energy industry isn't the easiest to recruit for. So um, what we're going to do is just talk through some of the ways they've made it easier for them. So in terms of at the beginning, you know, what was it all like? Well, you know, this is what the website looked like. Um, it was known as Red World. Uh, Empower were probably, as part from uh, an energy company, were known for their you know, sponsorship of the uh, Championship Football League, um, and you know, that was what they were. Yeah, they were the Empower. It was the Empower Football League, and um, yeah, it was very much red. Um, from a recruitment point of view, they had a problem. Um, Google basically couldn't find their jobs. They had a, a yeah, website which you know, they thought looked pretty. It's a little bit dated now, um, but all their vacancies were on their Lumes app, um, talent attraction. A talent link applicant tracking system um, and what that meant that basically they were hidden from Google um, in Google's eyes they didn't exist so that left them with a bit of a problem so yeah how did that impact them well they're quite honest about the fact that di direct hiring was only 8% they spent uh, millions on uh, recruitment agencies and job boards um, and you know in order to change that they needed to change the way they went out to market and attracted talent so the first thing they did was um, they launched a new website. Uh, working with myself and the Format team, um, we basically launched a website. Um, this is the third design of that website. Um, Empower, a good example of um, a company that have um, engaged, embraced the conversion rate optimization, um, the art of its small uh, improvements to gain a, an, a, an overall better result. Um, you, you know, Amazon itself never really launches a new website, it's continually improved. Um, and Empower is, a, is an organization, a, a company that recognized that. And the, the career site has been continually improved and updated. Uh, and the, you know, the actual brand updated to the, the latest one. Um, and this is the employer brand. This is not the uh, corporate brand, so it is subtly different. Um, and what we recognized is that job searching was shopping. Uh, I've, I, don't, I make no apologies for the fact that I probably sound like a stuck record uh, when I use this phrase, but we shop for jobs. It's in our DNA. We are, now we are a, a nation and a world of people that are used to online shopping. Um, we turn to Google. Uh, we turn to Google for our, for, you know, our um, you know, consumables, our cars, our houses, and our jobs. Um, so the approach we take is very similar, and the key thing was to make sure that you know, jobs could be found in the same way as we could a you know, new TV. So Google for any jobs was absolute key, um, and what I mean by that is basically making sure um, the jobs could be found in Google search engine listings. So here we have an example, uh, market researcher, manager Solihull. Yeah, I'm a market researcher, I'm looking for a job in, you know, the, in East Burma, Birmingham, I live near Solihull. Um, so that's what I search for. Um, and what that means is that you know, people searching that, the job you know, invariably will appear on page one, uh, if not at the top of the search engine rankings. Um, and we do that by basically pulling out key bits of information um, and making a Google-friendly uh, web address. Uh, and we pull out the first line 
of the actual, you know, first lines of the actual job advert as the hook that appears in the Google uh, ranking. So we're not only making sure it appears, but helping people to actually click on it. Same as you, you, you'd see when you're searching for any product, to be honest. Um, so by getting those basics right, what we actually do, we're delivering you know, three quarters of the actual website traffic to internal pages. So either to specific uh, job adverts or to specific landing pages built around job families such as HR, finance, uh, marketing, engineering, um, smart meters, uh, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, so most people don't actually land on the homepage. They actually find exactly what they want uh, in the website and come straight to it and then can you know, navigate further from within that area. And the same way as you very rarely land on the, the homepage of Amazon or Curry's, uh, you'll land on the actual product or the product grouping. Um, so what's the problem, you say? You know, um, essentially, Empower are attracting active job seekers um, to kind of phrase they don't need to worry about active job seekers because they will find them. Um, and that's because the op site's optimized. But they have a bigger problem. You know, in terms of, think about the energy sector. It's basically gas and electricity. Um, product differentiation is a, a real issue. So um, it's recruiting in a very challenging sector. Not just about product differentiation, um, which you know a lot of people will talk about at events, but also in terms of what people say about the industry. You know, it's not the most popular industry. You know, we all, we all can uh, agree to that. Um, but when it comes to differentiating yourself, um, they have, suffer a problem unlike most others. Most of you will definitely recognise Facebook from their logo. Some of you may not recognize, but I, I still suspect the majority of you will recognize Instagram from their logo. And you know, most people, again, would recognize uh, the car company behind this, you know, Audi. Those of you who have worked for, in recruitment agencies you know, probably had an Audi or a BMW. Um, and you know, the brand is strong. You know, it's 40 years ago that the term Vorsprung durch Technique uh, was coined. Uh, I don't remember it first launching, but I certainly remember uh, the Audi Quattro here. So yeah, that brand recognition with products uh, goes hand in hand. This one may be a bit more tricky. Um, for those of you who are in the know, you'll recognize this is actually the logo of MI6. And when it comes to MI6, you know, the image you have in your head is potentially James Bond, DB5, Walther PPK and Daniel Craig, or for the, those of you looking back in time, certainly uh, some of the more uh, popular uh, James Bonds. Um, so again, strong product differentiation basis associated with the, the logo and the brand. Those of you who are of a certain age as well will remember the Pepsi challenge, yeah, in terms of Coke and Pepsi competing, yeah, they were trying to make very distinct product differentiation between the two. But here's the problem. When I switch on a light bulb, what's the difference in product between this light bulb, in terms of the energy supplier, and this light bulb? When I switch on the gas, what's the difference between the gas that I'm getting from Empower compared to the gas that I'm getting from EDF, or Eon, or any number of the smaller uh, players in the market? And that is the problem, that when it comes to actually switching on the light, I can't tell who is supplying my product. So in terms of having a consumer brand, yeah, it's not differentiated by product. So yeah, I could work for you know, Pepsi and I could say yeah, our products are better than Coke. Or I could work for um, any number of the uh, DIY warehouses, you know, home base, B&Q, Wix, etc. And again, I can differentiate by the, you know, the product brand. So when it comes to actually attracting talent, how are we going to differentiate? How are we going to say we are better than our competitors? Not just in the energy sector, but in our local markets. And why we're a better employer. Why people should consider working for Empower. So what we came, started looking at is actually, it's the people. It's the people that work at Empower, and it's the, the work they do and the stories that they tell that are going to differentiate the business from other people. So here we've got some examples, we went around the business and Empower started, went around the business, iPhone in hand, and started taking videos. So yeah, they spent time up in the northeast uh, in the customer service centers um, talking to people and literally just asking a few quick questions. What do you do at Empower? 
Why do you work for Empower? What do you like about working for Empower? What would you say to somebody that's considering a, a job at Empower? So pretty simple questions that could be then snipped up into uh, a small video um, and basically uploaded to YouTube and advertised on the website. Well, not such an advertised, published on the website. Um, and you've got some great personalities that came through. You've got Ashley here up in the, the top left, a real broad Geordie, and you know, talks passionately about Empower, but it doesn't sound fake. It sounds very authentic. It doesn't sound scripted. It's just him answering some questions. And the same with Claire. You know, she's a customer service advisor again. Very different to Ashley in terms of background and everything else and why she work, likes working for Empower. But she's telling the, 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 from her heart, really, and I know it sounds cheesy, but she is actually giving the real reasons why she's working at the business. And then you come down to Danielle, who's working down in Solihull in the, the digital transformation team, uh, and David Busterfield, who's actually in a you know, senior role, demand, you know, forecasting the demand of electricity and gas. So, yeah, a very uh, yeah, highly stressed uh, role, trying to work out how much electricity we're going to need during the winter months. Um, but it's not just about videos. You know, videos, some people say, oh, it takes time, they're difficult, you need to be able to edit them. But actually, there's some really simple content that we started with for five years ago now, and that was telling the stories behind the people, uh, sorry, the people behind the, the project. So, you know, for example, days in the life of customer service advisor Empire. These are the most widely read pieces of content on the website outside of um, jobs and vacancies. The reason for it is, as people, we want to know what it's like to work in a company doing a certain job. Um, we have a phrase for it, we call it, yeah, where, what is my desk, where is my window? And that, what that means is basically, yeah, where, where am I sitting in the business, what am I going to be, you know, who's going to be surrounding me, what is my day going to be like, and what can I see from my desk, who am I going to interact with? Um, but also in terms of information about, you know, areas of the business. So smart metering at the moment is, you know, the, the talk of everywhere. It has been for a number of years, but it, it's accelerated in the last, um, you know, six to 12 months. You know, by 2020, you know, every house um, needs to have a smart meter. Yeah, I can be honest with you and say that, you know, there are less smart meters, meter engineers out there or installers uh, than jobs. So it's really about um, using transferable skills, getting people who are gas engineers, electricity engineers, um, you know, Sparky is working independently and training them to actually become smarter meter engineers. So it's giving them insight. We've also been trialing um, in the last few weeks some um, video job ads. So what we do here is the guys uh, in the business actually you know, take videos of the hiring managers basically telling people about the job. So we've got Ben and Kevin here. Um, from the digital program uh, team, talking about what it's like to be a project manager and what the job will involve, what the people are involved, what the scope of the role is. Um, just give you a little bit more of an insight, a little bit of personality to a, a job advert. And we all know how bad job adverts can be. You know, the job spec, I said it before, I'll say it again, a job spec is not a job advert. So this actually brings it to life. But what we've also done is um, the guys have gone out throughout the business and just stopped people. Uh, and ask them some questions. So, yeah, we've got an example here um, coming up from YouTube of, um, oops, wrong one, of Graham. Graham's a smart engineer. Team here, there's a lot of teamwork. Um, we've got training and we've got prospects for the career. Um, and I don't um, stress about coming into work, whereas previous jobs I have done that. So we've got, yeah, Graham there is a pretty solid northern lad. Um, yeah, he's literally just stopped, been stopped in his van and asked these questions as he came back to, to base. So it comes across very authentic. Yeah, he's. Yeah, it's not trying to oversell or anything like that. He's just telling it as it is. Um, what you've also got here, we've got Reader. Reader works in uh, the, uh, the marketing team in, in uh, Solihull. Um, so she gives a very different perspective. I think 
thing that I really like about working at Empower is um, the people. It's full of weird and wonderful people, recreative, different talents. I'd say the most interesting thing I do is my job. <laughs> so I work in marketing. It's all about creativity. And the best thing for me is seeing the end result, whether that's the um, direct mail or the email or the billboards all around Sully Hall and Leeds and Birmingham. What makes me smile at work is my team. Um, I love my team. Uh, also, when my manager buys me chocolates. And again, a very honest and you know, very down to earth um, person. You know, what Rita is talking about is from her heart, you know, the fact that she's working with weird and wonderful people and she loves it because when a manager buys her chocolates. Um, so I think this gives, you know, it shows that actually the human, human elements of the business and that people are real and I know that sounds silly but actually when you look at a lot of career sites it can be very corporate and you don't get a sense of what people are really like and what we've tried to do uh, working with Empower is really bring out that uh, reality uh, of what the people are actually like because if you ask people in the business why do they work there it's the people and it's often the case with many organizations so if that's the case get those people's story out into the, into the uh, front onto the career site um, and what we need to do is engage with them with relevant content. So it's about understanding your audience, um, finding out where they hang out. Are they on Facebook? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, etc.? And once you know where they hang out, look at what content is of interest and try to make a connection. And by actually making that connection, you can start influencing them and influencing them to choose you as an employer. And this is what it is all about in terms of actual employee brand, employer brand. It's actually getting out there and making people understand what you're about and why they should choose you as a brand. So we've got an example here of a campaign page built around smart metering. So as key information is displayed, it's easy for people to find, they don't have to navigate around, it's all in one place. Testimonial, register an interest, access to jobs. As you can see, we've got the, you know, the vi video with Graham uh, on the page, clear buttons to find out what we know people are interested in. And then the bottom we've got here um, in terms of relevant blogs. So these blogs are uh, automatically brought into the page. Talking one about the smart meter movement there. Alongside it, you've got relevant content with other um, smart meter um, blogs. And as you look here on the left, we've got um, relevant jet vacancies within the smart meter environment. So we're putting related content together and click through to a project manager and then they can apply to the job. So it's all about placing that relevant content. So in the same way as um, we do with, you know, we're used to with supermarkets or, you know, if you're going shopping on Amazon or John Lewis, that if you look at a, a certain product or related information about product, you're being shown addition, additional re relevant information. So if you're interested in this TV, then you might also, also be interested in this TV, but you might also be interested in this soundbar. So it's about that, what I would call cross-pollination uh, and creating the Amazon effect to basically continue and make it easy for people to engage and ultimately convert into an application or hire. But throughout that point, you're giving them information that helps them choose you as an employer if you're right, but also, more importantly, for those of you who are swamped by candidates, actually the other way, put, maybe putting people off. I once had a conversation with a retailer who said, you know, what we want to do is, you know, people that work, want to work for temp jobs at Christmas, they don't realize what it's actually like at the New Year sales. The actual, when you open the doors and the sea of people come towards you. I said, it's quite simply, so video it. Let's get a video of what actually happens, uh, put it up on the website. Um, and it will put people off. It may not, but it will also put it will put an awful awful lot of people off. Um, and once you've got content, you've then got something to share. You've then got something to actually engage with people on social media. So whether it is Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, each platform is different for different people. Um, but what we've been able to do is effectively build up content ahead of vacancies. So for example, what we've got here is you know a life as an account manager. And this, this actual uh, article blog was pushed out into uh, Facebook uh, ahead of the actual vacancies uh, being launched um, or the actual being open. And when they actually uh, opened them, we then started putting a little bit of um, yeah, uh, paid promotion. So effectively targeting people in the areas um, that they were recruiting account managers um, in terms of geographic areas, interests, things like that. And you know, very quickly we reached 33,000 uh, people. We got 569 uh, yeah, actual post clicks 
and back the place. And then in terms of applications, you know, I think they, they managed two thirds of the actual applications uh, came from Facebook uh, and half of the actual interviews. Um, I'd, I'd be lying if I said to you that I knew that they actually they actually hired from the uh, Facebook advert, uh, but off the top of my head, it certainly um, generated the interest. But overall, what that's done is um, year on year has increased social content views uh, by 250%, and the social conversions. And when I talk about conversions, I mean actual conversions into applications has gone up 300%. Um, but without the actual content talking about what it's like to be an employee of Empower they wouldn't have had anything to share on social media. Um, so all of, you know, like a lot of companies, all they'd be relying on is basically posting jobs. Um, and nobody is interested in just jobs on a Facebook page or a Twitter feed uh, or LinkedIn. Um, and the key thing was also to remember that mobile. So Empower social traffic is between 40 and 70% uh, from mobile. Um, Generally, it's the, the lower uh, percentages based on people that are in uh, more de what I'd call desk-bound jobs. So, you know, maybe in finance, maybe in HR, uh, whereas mobile traffic for account managers, smart engineers, contact centers it is probably all, it is, is about 80%. Uh, so it's actually probably a little bit higher, um, but the average of the top is 70%. So what does that mean in reality? You know, we're doing all this lovely stuff, we're talking about people, we're creating content that talks about what it's like to be an employee and why people should join Empower. Um, so what are the actual results? Well, Empower actually carry out surveys um, throughout their um, recruitment process. Um, basically, it's very key to them to monitor um, you know, quite a few things, but one of them is in terms of their expectations and perception of the business before interview, after interview, and after they've actually joined Empower. Um, so when they actually interview people um, or create a survey after an interview, basically what they're getting, and they call this the voice of the applicant, 85% of people say that their expectation of what Empower was like was met at the actual interview. So what they would thought Empower would be like was actually what it really would be like. It's not perfect, but it's a very good result. They then interview people once they've actually joined the business and ask them, yeah, um, a few, uh, fair bit of time, you know, a few weeks or so after they actually joined, what their expectation reality was like and what the perception of the business was compared to the reality. And 86% said that it was met. So again, very similar number. So that what this does, it's about making sure that the content that's put, you know, published on the website is authentic. And when they come back to interview, that content is backed up by what hiring managers and recruiters are actually talking about. And then when they actually join, it's making sure that that reality is actually met. So what Empower can do is say that, you know, with hand on heart, is say that the majority of their content that they're publishing is very authentic. And ultimately, that is attributed to the fact that they are 90% uh, direct hires, um, with 65% um, of all direct hires uh, coming directly via the actual career site. Empower don't use job boards, so the remainder of the hires are primarily through referrals and direct sourcing through channels like LinkedIn and headhunting. Um, and what that means in reality is annual savings in the millions. Um, the actual investment in the website is a you know, less than 10% of the savings they're actually making. Uh, overall, in terms of actual, you know, direct hires. So, if they lost, you know, from their perspective, the website is a is a very valuable asset. Um, which, when it comes down to the investment, when it comes down to budget, it is a very simple equation. Um, when it comes to convincing finance that they need their uh, budgets protected. If you're interested in finding out more, uh, Adrian, unfortunately, was on decided to take annual leave uh, this week. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately he wasn't able to uh, co-present, um, but yeah, his contact details are there if anybody has actually, uh, does actually want to reach out to him. Um, I know Adrian would be more than happy to uh, talk to people about what, what they're doing as a business. Any questions? Excellent, DJ. Thank you very much. So, a really compelling story there. When we talk about things like uh, engagement and authentic content, employer brands, some people can think it's a little bit woolly. But I think this really <laughs> demonstrates, you know, the actual pounds and pence of why this is a worthwhile investment. Um, so, we've had some questions come through. Um, uh, if, if there's any that you've got as we go through, please do type them up, and, and we'll, we'll answer them as we go. But some people have already done that for us. Um, this is a common thing, I think, that, that will resonate with a few people. Um, someone's asking, does NPAL content need to go via the brand stroke marketing departments? 
a very good question and a very common one. Um, yes, when we started working with Empower, um, brands and uh, comms were very uh, interested in what was being written um, because in the first uh, you know, months it was very much around uh, writing blog content. Uh, it took, I'll be honest, it took them about six months to actually get approval uh, for a Facebook page. So the early days it was about content, web content. Um, what we used to do, uh, we used to have a, a fortnightly call uh, with the team and um, as part of that the recruitment team and a member of internal comms and external comms would be on the call. Um, so every piece of content was written, circulated to the recruitment team, uh, approved by them and the, you know, for example if we were interviewing a hiring manager or the account manager as you saw there, uh, it would be checked and approved by them. Once they had approved it, it would then go to um, internal comms uh, or external comms depending on uh, who was actually uh, interested in, in reviewing things at that point um, and approved. I'll be honest, after three months they were happy. Uh, they were happy with the, the, the element, the level of trust, um, the fact that we weren't, uh, we were sticking with the uh, yeah, brand guidelines, we weren't saying that anything controversial um, and that's been how, the, you know, how it's run now for the last uh, four and a half, five years and in fact you know, brand uh, marketing and the digital teams uh, in the last six months have uh, started coming direct to us um, with ideas and content um, which means the recruitment team are now sort of like trying to say, well, hold on, we have to do, we have to cover everything. Um, but it's a really good reflection that they put their trust in um, yeah, our content writers uh, and teams to actually um, look after them. Excellent. I think the bigger your brand, the more likely brand yeah. marketing allies yeah. are involved. Aren't yeah. they? But it is a question of trust which you build over time. So um, um, I'm kind of running on from that. Um, somebody asks, how often um, do you suggest we would need to refresh content? So I think some people are a bit scared of that maybe this is yeah. labor intensive or you know, comes a job in itself. It's, it's a really common one. People say, I haven't got time to manage content or do content. Um, you don't have to do you don't have to be writing articles or content or profiles every single day of the week. Um, we actually uh, publish four pieces of, of unique content uh, around on the Empower site a month. Uh, it's once it's basically yeah, it's once a week effectively. Um, and then what we do is that piece of content is then shared socially. We then uh, plan out schedule a, a lot of posts across Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and and uh, Twitter um, to get that out into the market. Um, so actually, um, it's not hugely time-consuming, um, and it's a case of it's a little regular and often is the way to do it, um, and it's manageable. Um, if you decided to do it internally, um, yeah, the easiest way is, for example, looking at uh, employee profiles. Yeah, we use employee profile templates, and what happens is the recruitment teams send those round to all. Uh, you know, typically new starters, but also people that they're where they're recruiting, and then we start. We basically write up those profiles into a, a nice page that goes on the, the website. So again, asking five or six questions, and from those answers, writing up a profile with a photograph. These days, with a smartphone, easy to take a, uh, a photograph against a pale background that is good quality uh, to post on the website. Um, most of our clients are, are doing that now. Um, but that's something that you can do internally or we help with. Excellent. And uh, just as you were saying that, someone's typed in a, a related question. Um, so obviously we're talking about people here and, and using employees in the company. So somebody's asking, what happens when the people that you profile leave? <laughs> so, yeah. You know, um, nobody stays in the <coughs> forever. It's, it's a perfectly legitimate question. The, the nature of the beast, I think, there is in terms of people move around. Um, I'll be honest, the short answer is don't worry unnecessarily about it. Um, yes, you don't want, I agree, you do not want uh, pictures of people or videos of people who left three, four years ago. Uh, that's a little bit embarrassing. Um, we do a, we do a, you know, basically we review, uh, we keep a list of all the profiles uh, and videos that are on websites. Um, there are also, obviously, videos are on YouTube uh, and Vimeo, depending on, you know, who's produced them uh, and where they want them. Uh, often they'll be on both. Um, but it's quite simple then just to do a quick review and check to see whether people are, have moved on. And if they have, yeah, it's very simple to, to, to remove them. Um, but to be honest, it's never really been a major issue. Uh, people do move on. Uh, I had one company once say uh, they just missed it. They were managing their own site and they said, oh, we've, we've just realized this person left a year ago. 
your average, you know, your visitor to your career site isn't going to know. The only person that people that are going to know are people within that team, but also potentially that individual. Um, and if that individual has left, they often will say, oh, I've moved on, can you remove my picture? Nice and easy. Uh, and actually self-policing works very well there. But no, short answer is don't worry unnecessarily about it. No, exactly. And you know, it doesn't make it any less authentic as content, does it? Just because somebody's moved on. But you, know, you, should, no. keep, you should be keeping a regular eye on your website content generally Absolutely. anyway. Yeah, it's basically, but the big thing is to make sure that anybody who's, um, you know, content pictures or profiles on, on the website, yeah, they haven't left, left, left the business in the cloud, because that definitely would be embarrassing. <laughs> Excellent. So if there are any more questions, we've got one more that's come through, so unless there are any more, please please do type away, but otherwise this will be the last one. Nice one to end on, I think. Um, less of a question, more of a statement. Sounds expensive. <laughs> so I think they're talking about a couple of things. There. Are, they talking about, are they talking about MPAS electricity, or are they talking about <laughs> actually the publication? Um, to be honest, I think it's whether you manage this internally, uh, write your own content, whether you use a, a, an agency such as Format uh, to write that content for you, there is always a, a cost in time, um, and that is effectively a you know, cost to the business. If it's an internal employee, um, in terms of their time and you know the fact they're not you know recruiting, or there's a cost uh, in terms of pounds and pence uh, using an external agency such as ours. Um, I think the results speak for themselves. Um, one of my clients, uh, Atkins, is very clear on the fact that they want their recruiters to focus on recruitment um, and not to have to be constantly thinking about uh, you know, what content they need to write and things like that. What they do want is that the, them to interact with us and um, come forward with ideas and what they need and what they're, where they're recruiting for so that we can write content. So it's using experts for um, the relevant uh, expertise. Um, so yeah, they're recruiters. We're great content writers. We're great marketeers. So it works really uh, hand in hand. Um, but yeah, the results. I think yeah, Empower the ninety percent agency. Uh, sorry, direct hire. Um, yeah, speaks for itself. So yeah, and you don't have to spend a fortune. Yeah, you can you can yeah you know, four four blogs a month. Yeah, you know, writing four blogs a month doesn't cost the earth. Yeah, you know, it's relatively uh, you know, low cost, high value. So I think it's a case of decide what you want to do, whether you want to invest the time or whether you don't. What you don't want to have is a career site that in six months' time you look at, look at it and go, nothing's changed. Um, because at the end of the day, if people are browsing, they're considering you as an employer, they may not be ready to actually uh, jump ships, so to speak. Uh, they may have already been checking out your website. So if it doesn't change for six months, it doesn't really say much about you. Imagine if... Yeah, you know, John Lewis website was the same, had the same same stock, the same images, day in, day out. You get pretty bored. So I hope that's been useful. Um, it's something that's talked an awful lot about. Um, but yeah, contact details there. Um, the video, yeah, you know, the actual videos will be available uh, as well uh, of the webinar if you want to show other people. Um, and we hope to speak to you again uh, next month for our next webinar which Jamie will be sending out details shortly. I will indeed. Thank you very much for attending, everybody. Um, hopefully we'll see you in the next webinar, or anything you need in the meantime, do get in touch. Thank you very much.